Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Mikey Show. Who is this Tom guy? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together. Talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Right on our toll-free telephone number, you're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. So there you are in a bright, brand new, happy relationship. Oh, it's just wonderful. And the person <laughs> you used to be involved with, the ex, the psycho ex, the crazy ex, the pathetic ex, is miserable. Uh, you're so happy, and they are now trying to cause problems in your new relationship. If that's you, call me now at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Amanda on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Hi. Well, I was calling because I have a question for you, and it's an issue that I've discussed with you know friends of mine and family, but. I think that sometimes people agree with you for the sake of agreeing with you or whatever, but I know you'll give me something to think about. So are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So six years ago, I was dating this guy living with him. He decided to go back to Hawaii. When he did, he took all personal items, clothes like that, except for a couple of photo albums that his mom had sent him of, like, baby pictures and their family photos. So six years later, I still have it in a box in my closet. Now, I know it irritates the heck out of my husband, and I am sorry for that, but I don't know what else to do with them, and I would feel like a jerk if I just tossed them out. Well, what are you going to do with them? I don't know. I feel like I'm storing them for storage sakes, but, but what do you do when it's someone's family that you would be throwing their pictures out of? You, well, know? you can always That's give the pictures back. I tried to contact his sister through, and you're going to laugh at this, MySpace. She won't answer me. And I have no contact for him, and his father died, so I don't know even if his family lives in the same place in Hawaii. Well, dear, uh, have you ever tried any of the search services? Like I, I did. I've tried Googling him. I haven't no, tried no. the ones you have to pay for. Well, no, no, I, but there's one called Zaba Search, Z-A-B-A Search. It's free. Okay. okay. Put their name in there. Put the state where they live, and um, and, uh, and you can let so that's a good place to start to look. Is, okay. Does it give you any other sort of information about that person? Because he has a common name, and so I'm afraid that I'm going to end up with like... Well, they, 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 yeah, do they live in a common city? I mean, is the city New York City or Chicago, Illinois? I don't know if he lives in his hometown anymore. Well, the thing is, it'll search the whole country. It'll search the whole country. And it will give you sometimes date of birth if they have it. Okay. Phone number. See if the phone number matches any phone numbers you have. I don't have any for him. That's, I mean, he left six years ago and he joined the Coast Guard and I haven't heard from him since. What about the rest of his family? His sister has a MySpace page. And like I said, his dad died. So I don't know if his parents still live in the same place. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, that, uh, these are, uh, but dear, for 40 bucks, you can answer this question. Is that through the, like, 1-800 search? one 800 us search or okay. Intellius, one of those. 40 bucks. Now, is your marriage worth 40 bucks? My marriage is worth a million dollars. All right. So if you uh, if you feel guilty throwing these pictures out, spend the 40 bucks, find out where he is, and send it FedEx right to where he is. Okay. Be done with it. Okay. Okay, yeah. That's what I'm going to do. All right. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Women who keep those photographs of people from the past, you don't realize how much you're giving up in terms of intimacy in your relationship. Sure, you have the right to keep that stuff, but I'm telling you, we guys don't like it. We don't. 
1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Tino on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's going on, Tom? How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'd like to comment on the little situation I have going on, which you're talking about today. I just recently hooked up with a new girl. Best thing that's ever happened so far. You know, she's cool with me going out with my friends, you know, doing my own little thing on the side here, went there, doesn't complain about my job. Couldn't ask for a better situation. And in walks in my ex-girlfriend. I guess somehow over my space, the way you're talking about it right now, uh, my ex-girlfriend seen me with my new lady here, there, doing whatnot, and now she has been, I guess, sending messages doing whatnot over my space uh, to my current lady. And so now they're going back and forth. She's asking me who's this girl. I'm, and I'm, Why does your current lady have a MySpace page? Do you know what? Honestly, bro, I don't even know. Wow. I, mean, to be, I mean, at wow. the time, it didn't even wow. occur to me to ask her about it. But right now that you're mentioning it, that's a very good situation. I mean, because, you know... They say my space is where friends meet friends. Nah, my space is where people go to hook up. Yeah, well, you, you, you know why they call it my space? Uh, why do they call it my space? Because your girlfriend puts her left leg at the 12 and her right leg at the 3, and she points at her crotch, and that's her space right there. <laughs> right on, right on. I mean, but, I mean, it's, it's had a negative effect, and at the same time, it's actually had a pretty good effect on my relationship. I mean, you know, I, I get some grief every now and again. I just tell her, you know what, either you trust me and you believe what I'm telling you, or, you know, the door's right there, you know, you're not under contract to be here. And, you know, but so, you know, she has no other reason, you know, she has no other choice but to trust me, you know, everything's going pretty cool. At the same time, she knows I'm wanting, so she is, you know, giving up, you know, giving up certain things that she wouldn't give up, that she didn't give up before. Now she's more willing to, you know, oh, let's go here, let's do that, let's do what you want to do. Oh, yeah, I'm willing to try that or whatever, because now I guess she's starting to realize I'm a hot commodity in the market and people are after me. So it's actually having the opposite effect. Your ex is actually making it seem like you're really in demand. Correct. I mm -hmm. mean, I am to a point, I don't want to toot my own horn, but the fact that all this is going on back and forth and that other women... You know, you know that, that and, you know. I, I, I keep uh, you know a, a, a nice relationship open as, as far as you know on a platonic level, which I'm just keeping on the side of standby. You know, they're seeing it also, so you know they you know question me every now and again. Also, oh, what's going on? What's this drama going on? I'm like, you know what? It's you know old, the old ex mess, messing with the new girl. I might have two you know brand new exes, so I don't know what my situation is. So now because of that, you know I'm getting a lot of standby offers, so I can't really complain about it. Well, that part is good. I hadn't thought about that angle. Uh, under the right circumstances, maybe it makes you appear to be in demand, for God's sake. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. You know the deal. There you are. You're in a new relationship, and you're happy. But the ex is trying to get up in your grill, trying to make things miserable, trying to maybe break up your relationship or make your relationship more difficult. Adam on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. How you doing? Doing okay. All right. First time caller. Been listening for about two years. Cool. All right. So can I spill my story? No, I thought I'd just make you wait. All right. You can go ahead and say it for me, Tom. No, well, you go ahead and tell it yourself. Okay. I was married for 12 years, and uh, my ex-wife um, was having an 18-month affair when I found out. And so, like any rational man, I told her to get out. And uh, he was married, and uh, my wife and his wife were friends, so she told him, get out. They hook up. They're together for three, four months. He leaves my ex-wife and goes back to his wife, so she's pretty desperate now and is begging for me back. And, you know, like a smart man, I told her to kick rocks. In the meantime, she gets pregnant by another guy. And uh, so in this time frame, I had been dating for a little while, and then I hooked up with a girl that I've been with for a little bit. And she had constantly never met her before, but text messages her, text messages her, calls her, harasses her in my driveway, just makes her life a living hell, and doesn't know her on a personal level at all, and just plummets her and has her boyfriend come to me and say to leave her alone, but she's telling her boyfriend all this stuff that we're doing, which is just, um, you know, impassive, just trying to get along. Because Why don't you send him the text messages? I've saved them. It doesn't do any good. I have emailed him saying, hey, let's sit down and have a rational conversation. No, no, don't be having a conversation with him. Just send him the text messages. It won't do any good anymore, Tom. It's, at this point, it's better to just walk away from it and ignore her. And uh, that's all I can do. By the way, how did she get the email address or the cell phone number of your girl? Uh, because she stole my son's cell phone and got, the got her phone number because it was programmed in his phone. 
or she had called him or whatever and got the phone number from my son's cell phone and started harassing her. And then she got the email address because uh, my daughter and my girlfriend now conversed via email, and she broke into my daughter's email account and stole my girlfriend's email address and started harassing her via email. Wow. Yeah. And she's come up. I have the kids. They live with me. She picks them up on the weekends. Two weeks ago, she pulls up. We're in the garage working on a motorcycle. She pulls up and just starts screaming, F you, bop, 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 to my girlfriend, who she's never met, never formally been introduced. And in passing at the baseball games, some baseball games. Boy, uh, that, 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 what does her boyfriend think about that? Dude, he's a big puss. Excuse my language. <laughs> he won't step up. I asked him about that. Why does she care? And his exact words were, he got in my face, my son's baseball field, got in my face and told me, it's none of my business. I don't know. It just bothers her. Those were his words. What kind of man wants to be with a woman who can't get over it? She left. I asked her to leave because of the situation, however. But uh, why does she care? I'm just amazed that, that he doesn't care about the fact that she cares. Well, he's a wuss, Tom. He's 27. He lives with his mama, never moved out. He's getting his first place with my ex-wife July of this year and just got his first car oh, like 90 days ago. He's a big loser. Yeah, very nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah, are you paying any? Uh, were you married to this woman? I was married to her for 12 years. I was paying her 2500 a month. And I got her just recently, we got a court order actually two days ago to wipe away all alimony because the kids live with me. So the thing was, I won't ask you for child support, bug off of the alimony, and she finally agreed. Wow. That's, that's it. Well, uh, no, more good reasons not to get married, guys. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. You have got to be like the lowest rung on the evolutionary ladder I've heard in a long time. Really? Yeah. The Tom Likas Show. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you so much for tuning in. There you are on the happiness of that wonderful new relationship, basking in the glow of forever and ever. You're in love. <laughs> and the ex comes along and tries to spoil it all. All right. Let's say hello here to uh, Tiffany on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? I was couldn't tell if it was you or your recording. Hi, this is Tiffany. I have some stories for you. When do you plan to tell those? <laughs> what what kind of story do you want to hear? A story about you call me, darling. Um. Well, it's about a stalker. His name is Nick, and he is absolutely crazy. He comes from an extremely wealthy family. He, you would never think that he was such a psycho, okay? And we break up over a year ago, and he has not stopped harassing me. I've changed my number. I will not get a restraining order against him because he, his, his family has so much money that when I was talking to a detective about this, about him climbing on my roof in the middle of the night and tapping on my window when he knows my parents aren't home, I just, I had to move back at home with my parents. I'm 22 years old. I've lived alone for four years and I just now moved, I've lived at home for a year. He's climbing on my roof. He's just being crazy. The police, I have all these reports with the police, but I don't want to get a restraining order because he, has lawyers that you know will i don't even know i'm just scared you know I, I shouldn't have to pay thousands of dollars just because he's crazy and he's threatening my new boyfriend's family he'll call his mother and he'll say that he's gonna kill the whole family and he's just psycho must have been what great in the sack huh yeah a little bit but well there you go you know that's i'm a dare you pick is. this guy Why'd you pick a guy like that to have a relationship with? Well, he, uh, like I said, money. I mean, you don't even, like, just, I've gone on his boss, his dad's boss has a 141 foot yacht. You know, we've gone to Italy, and it's just a lifestyle that I never had. I mean, I grew up in Agora Hills, California. That's the only place I've ever lived. So when I met him and we traveled all over the world, he took me back east to New York, Washington, D.C., Atlantic City, everywhere. And we just had, you know, he would just buy me whatever I wanted. And it was it was unbelievable. So, so you could be bought, but that's the kind of person that would need to buy you.
Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's what my mom said from the beginning. But, of course, I didn't listen to my mommy. Maybe I should have. But we all make mistakes. Unbelievable. But, you see, that is why, dear, and this is women your age and men your age don't want to hear this. Uh, you're too young to be having a serious relationship. Your judgment yeah. is clouded. Yeah, and that, I mean, then that was like a second, like, kind of crazy boy for me. And now I have a third who's just so normal, I don't even know what to do sometimes. I'm like, wait, you're, you're not a third? freaking out about Wait, this. wait, yeah. stop. How many guys are you dating? Boyfriend. What? How many guys are you dating? Just one. Well, just you, well, who's the, you have I a third just, what? My third, like, relationship, oh. like, that I would say. What you're you in know. now is your third relationship? Yeah, I'm 22, and I had, like, a boyfriend when I was 16 until, like, 18, and then he turned out to be kind of crazy, and then I had this next one, and then I met the one I have now, and it was the last one that was extremely crazy, and it's still... But did you ever think maybe you should just be casually dating people and not in relationships until you are mature enough to know who's crazy and who's not? But see, but I said I think I think I know that now because no. I met this, this new guy is just because you haven't broken up with anything. him yet. Oh, please, that's what everybody says about no. the person they're with today. No, no, of no. course they do. You thought that about the first guy when he was his showing you his boyfriends like mine though, like stalkers and you know white beaters or whatever. I mean, she's had you know like people be abusive to her in different ways, and he's been around that, so it's like he he just. He almost killed this guy. You know, he was just, he hated him, he thought. He said, what you said, why would you pick a guy like this? Because I'm a good-looking girl, and he's just a snake. But you're right. My, but my judgment, I think, has changed. In the, you know? Well, you've you got to think he's great until you break up with him, and he acts like a nut. I mean, dear, well, your, your judgment it, it, is not exactly. good. Exactly. Uh, your, but your judgment is not good. Yes, yeah, some say that. Well, but, they're, they're right. And they know you better than I do. Yeah, but Grant is wonderful, though. It's it's unbelievable. Oh. Now, every friend of mine, but see, my friends and my mom never liked my boyfriend. You know, the two that were crazy, no one liked them, you know, except me, which, yeah, is my judgment. But now, I mean, I really think someone is a genuinely good person. And, you know, I never know what he'll do. You're right. But my... And my mom loves him. Like, my dad and him work together. I mean, it's just a completely different, completely different situation. Wow. All right, Tiffany, you're just going to have to find out the hard way. And obviously your friends know about this, and I have the same opinion as your friends, and you're the only one what who can't I see do, it. What do do, though, about this? Because I'm not worried about the future and this guy being crazy and, you know, whatever. Clearly you're happens, not. But. Well, I'm just saying whatever happens, happens. I don't think that will happen with him. Maybe I'll go crazy and I'll... Well, whoever, right? whoever, right? Let me ask you a question. Like, whoever... Stop. Whoever gets into a relationship believing the person's going to go crazy? Nobody. Exactly. Well, including you. Happen. <laughs> but the thing is, you didn't think the first guy was going to go crazy. Actually, I kind of could have foreseen that. But like I said, because of all the, the money and all that, I just... So, okay, I so an insane person can buy you. An insane person can buy you, is that right? Oh, he totally bought me. Really? So if somebody with more money came along, they could buy you too? No. No. Why not? Because I wouldn't have, cause I was emo like I became his friend and I was emotionally involved in him before I even really knew all this money that he had, you know. So I liked him. He people say even the police tell me they're like, He's a charmer, Tiffany. He's like he has this great winning smile and you wanna believe everything he says. He's a salesman, he sells like, yeah, watch your mouth. You're on the I'm air. Sorry, I'm sorry. He sells, you know, he just nonstop to anybody. He can sell anything to anyone. And that's part of his whole, like, kind of, the police told me that they think he's a like a sociopath. Like, but he, you know, is just someone different, like Scott Peterson, like someone that you think is just such a nice person and has such a different side. Like, and that's how exactly how I would describe him. But he hacks into my account so he has my social security number so now i'm having to report him for identity theft and all this stuff because he's like open like a verizon account like to his house phone on my name and i'm like calling him saying i don't live here what are you doing you know and then, then he like won't pay the bill so that i'm tr he's trying to screw me over you know and oh my he, God. he's hacked into my cell phone account like five times now this is the fifth well dear that, that dear that's what happened you see when somebody buys you they can buy anything. No, no. 
That's not, not you're not hearing me, and you don't want to hear what I'm going to say. Oh no! When somebody yeah. buys you, they are paying for exclusivity. Yeah. No man just so buys you things. Do you wait, listen carefully? No man just buys you things. The money's been spent. Mm-hmm. You see, um, if you accept all that stuff from somebody, they expect something in return. Yes. Do you understand? Oh yeah. So. If if he gave you all that stuff, he expects that you're not talking to other people, not dating other people, not calling other people. Yeah, but then when I break off, it off with him, then, you know, and, and the police go in, to his work and embarrass him in front of his boss and tell him that he needs to stay away from me, you know, then then what do I do? And I told, I told you I had to... Well, the mistake, was, the mistake was allowing yourself to be rented. Well... I didn't want to, but yes, you know, no, 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 bah, 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 don't, bah, bah, don't, look, don't, don't BS me. What do you mean you didn't want to? You, you volunteered for that. Yeah, well, I said from the beginning it wasn't like that, and then it ended up like that. It, it and I was like, the, the, you. Ne like why that. did you ever accept yeah. anything? Because yeah, you're I immature like and you're not I mean, capable yeah. of good judgment when it comes to relationships. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, like you said, I didn't think that he was going to expect all that he did from me. That's what every man is going to expect who spends money on you. So my if, new boyfriend doesn't spend money on him. What does that mean? Well, hopefully, me. hopefully he won't be <laughs> psycho like the ex. Jason, what did you want to say to Tiffany? Uh, yeah, I have a few few words for, for her, Tom. Um, Tiffany, you, you want to borrow my balls? Because no. you, you're, you're being stupid. You're being very, very stupid. Women like you are huge pushovers and easy in the sack. You just, you but need how to. How do I get rid of this crazy guy who's climbing on my parents' house roof? Well, you know? Okay, okay, well then call the police. I have. The order. police show up and he's gone down the street, buddy. You tell me how to get rid of someone like that. He finds my new boyfriend's home number and calls his mother, says he's going to kill her. And we've gone to the police. The police aren't helping. You don't seem to realize sure. his dad is a billionaire. Sure. They are friends with the chief police. They, uh, they threatened an officer his job and the detective never called me again. What do I do now? You, you go a step, a step higher. You go a step What's higher that? and you quit. The president? What is that? Because I would love to know. I'm serious. I just love how you're uh, you're trashing this guy. A man you had sex with. A man who penetrated you. A man you took money and, and, and goods and services from. And now you have all these negative things to say. Who brought this guy into your life? You. Yeah, but I'm just saying. Put him how out. Do I get, it's not my fault that he's crazy, though. It's right? your fault. So how do I get rid of a him? A crazy person wouldn't be following you around if you hadn't had sex with him, you see? But you don't always know how crazy someone if is. You so had if you hadn't had sex with him, if you hadn't had sex with him and engaged in a relationship with him, a crazy person well, would not I be pursuing have sex you now. With anyone because I don't know if I'm they're crazy and they might stop uh, me. And you're I'm telling you, you that well, you you clearly were you were available to the highest bidder. Tiffany, no, no, no. I actually, you want to know the truth? I got in my previous relationship. He was super hot, and I saw this guy, and he was kind of dorky, and I was like, you know, maybe a dorky guy who's I'm so sorry, had sex with a girl, maybe he'll be, you know, a little bit nicer to me. And I Tiffany. was wrong. He was just hey. crazy. Tiffany. Tiffany. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is your boyfriend now, is he like some little nerdy guy who can't stand up and no. thank you or what? No, he's got big old muscles. He just, he's like he just, six four. He's gorgeous. Okay, great. I'm glad he's gorgeous. But why doesn't he do anything about himself? If the cops don't do anything where you live, like stand up for the citizens, then he should be able to go over there and kick his ass, and the cops shouldn't care. They told him. I mean, you to do telling that, me, you're telling me that he threatened a police officer mm -hmm. to kill him or whatever, and the cops didn't do anything about it. So in the podunk town that you live in, your boyfriend should be able to go over there right now and whoop his ass and not have anything to worry about. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah, we don't really live in Hogan Dunk Town, but see, okay, well, no, what, now, what it was is the officer was looking. I came to the door with a shirt on with no bra, like it was a white shirt, and he was okay. staring at my boobs, okay? Sure, so sure. then who my ex-boyfriend knew this, sure. so he Who wouldn't do that? Sure. You're the extreme victim here. You, you're blowing everything out of proportion. 
You, you need to no, settle down. No, I'm you telling to... you what happened. That it wasn't him threatening an officer's, officer's life. Obviously, people can't really do that, even though they're best friends with the chief of police in town. I, I mean, didn't, I'm not that Didn't you just say that? Didn't you say it like 10 minutes ago that he threatened a police officer? I don't know. I mean, yeah, Tom, but... Did she say that? Well, you're I, saying you said something else. You said I threatened that they threatened his life, and so I was clearing it for you. But yeah, oh, okay. So I'm just saying, if the police can't help me, buddy, who can? Who can help me? Uh, I don't know. Write a letter to your governor. I don't know. I'm not in your situation. I would never be in your situation. Exactly. I'm sorry. I mean, I had whatever. I had a good time. Get a gun. All yeah. right. Well, but how would you get rid of him? You wouldn't do yeah. a crazy guy in the first place. Yeah, but that's not helping me. So why are you, you know, why are you calling well, let's see. Help? Let's see if Eric has some help for you here. Uh, Eric, what did you want to say to Tiffany? I want to say that this girl really needs to uh, be, have an IQ test before she calls this show. <laughs> because I'm 17 years old. And it's not like you're high as a kite, too. About life and this girl. She calls here. If you're 17, I don't think you have any of the experience to even be talking to Oh, right and now. Tiffany, of course, is 20. Tiffany is 22. She's lunatic. a mature adult. I let them no, I just it. lived a lot more than him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Darling, uh, uh, you have more in common with Eric than you'd ever care to admit. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Why can't, like, someone court a person anymore? It's all about getting in their pants. It is all about getting in their pants, dear. And you know what? For men, it always has been. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. You're in a brand new, brand spanking new relationship. And you're happy, 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 but the ex is trying to horn in and ruin things for you. I mean, the X is ruining things for you. Call us at 1-800-5800-866. This next call, I don't like the looks of this. Jose, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. Awesome, awesome. I got this little issue here. My lady's got one of them MySpace things, and I asked her to get rid of it, and she's got a problem. She asked me, why do you want me to get rid of it? Tom likes it, said so. It's so my dad. And so, what happened? Um, my question to you is, what the hell should I do about it? Well, <laughs> you see, you have to be a real man, and most men are not manly enough to do this. Uh, if if I was with a woman who had a MySpace page, I would say you got two choices. You have a MySpace page and no boyfriend, or a boyfriend and no MySpace page. There's no in-between. I'm not okay. going to have a girlfriend on my space page. It's that simple. And you've got until 5 o'clock to tell me what your answer is because i got the movie fan coming. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Well, that's, that's what you got to do. Yeah, for because sure. Because I mean, my I space like is that. nothing but out. a... My space is a bullpen for the next boyfriend to warm up. Yeah, that's exactly what I told her. I told her, you know what? Tom says it's a bullpen. She goes, what do you mean a bullpen? Exactly what you said, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, and she's still kind of, you know, you got to get over it. You're turning into this jealous boyfriend. You know, I'm not jealous. I could, you know? Watch your mouth. And, We're on the oh, air. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, but um, my whole thing is, man, when I was a youngster, I got, you know, like you say, more ass in the toilet seat. So I have no issue with her splitting. So what should I do? Well, uh, I mean, you know, again, my whole attitude about this is you know, MySpace is a place where people hook up. It's social networking, all right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all about meeting her friends she hasn't seen in a long time. I said, yeah, your friends. It's a bullpen. That's what I told her. Mm -hmm. So, hey, you know what? I appreciate it, Tom. You rock. Can you take me out with the bong rip? Absolutely. Here you go. <coughs> it's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What up, Tom? Not much. Yeah, I got a little um, story here for you. So I'm, like, dating this girl, and it's almost been about a year. Well, actually, this is past. It was about to be our one-year anniversary, 
And I decided that I met this girl on MySpace, and I started hanging out with her. And we started talking, and she was talking about her past relationships and how how they're useless. And I agreed, and I was like, whoa, someone, finally someone that has the same mentality as me. You can, you have to know the difference between having sex for fun and making love for love, right? So we started hanging out. We decided to... Uh, By the way, you're 19? Yeah. What are you doing with, with serious relationships? I, I was one after another, people like you calling in. I don't get it. Well, it's not, it wasn't so serious. It's not really serious. But if you're using the phrase making love, it's too goddamn serious. No, but what I'm saying is, like, she was trying to say that, that you know, people should just have sex for fun and not... They should, you know, especially when they're 19. Yeah, and then when that serious person comes in, that's when you make love for love, right? I, I'm saying, <laughs> I'm well, here's what I'm saying. You're a guy. The phrase right. making love shouldn't even be in your vocabulary. Not yet. It's all about fun. Maybe never. Yeah. But anyways, here's the thing. So we decided to, we have sex, and then the girl actually calls my girlfriend and tells her that I cheated on her. And so she ruined everything. So, and then after a while, she decided that because I changed my number, I erased my MySpace and everything, trying to get away from this girl because this girl was psycho. So she called my girlfriend and starts telling her how she's pregnant and this and that. And I was like, no way, that is not true. And it's crazy, man. She calls me and she leaves me messages like, you don't have to be involved, just get the bills and this and that. And I was like, whoa. You are crazy. Maybe she is pregnant. No, nah, she's not. It How was... do you know? Yeah, because I found out. Someone told me that it was just a lie. Don't worry about what someone found out. You don't know. No, I found out. It's for sure. It's so you saw things. you yeah. saw her pregnancy test, and you saw that it was negative. Yeah. Really? Who got you a copy of her pregnancy test? You're lying to me. No, I'm not. I got it. How did you get it? Because I made sure as soon as she told me that. Who gave it, it to you? She did. She gave you her pregnancy test. Yeah, I made sure. I wanted to make sure. I did not want. I, I did not want to walk around not knowing. I had to make sure, and it ended well, up being not true. Why would she even? I, this makes no sense, son. I do not understand. If she wanted to to trick you into believing she was pregnant, why would she agree to give you a copy of a pregnancy test? Because I made her. You can't make anyone do anything. No, but I did. I made sure. How? Because I talked to her and we had this long conversation, and as soon as I found out that it was not true, oh. that's when I decided to be done with her and just, you know. You know, I hate to say this, you're 19. You're a little boy. You're not grown up enough to be having relationships, girlfriends. You should be just having sex, having fun. Right. And you, you get too involved with these people? No. I should, I should just be having fun, like you always say. By the way, are you using condoms? Yeah, of course. 100% of the time? Yes. Uh-huh. Never been without one. All right. But, you know, your show's great, man. I thank you for Flash Friday. It's so fun. Well, hopefully you'll have fun and not get locked into another girl, which I, I can tell you're one of those. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Father. Hello, son. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you? I got a little situation, Father. I need you to help me out with it. I'm here for you, son. I met this girl probably about a year back, and everything started going good. She started coming to my apartment, and she was just great. You know what I'm saying? Awesome, awesome girl. I was about 25 at the time. You know, I... You know, I've been listening to your show for a while, so I didn't really want to, you know, make a real big deal out of this relationship. You know what I'm saying? Don't even really want to call it a relationship. It was just having sex in the beginning. And, uh, and like my mother always say, time spent, emotions grow. I spent a little time with her. Emotions grew and whatnot. And uh, one day, I don't know, you know what I'm saying, if, if it was just on me, but the rubber broke. And, you know what I'm saying, now she's saying she's pregnant and this, that, and the other, and and, you know, I'm like, look, let's just leave this alone. Let's try to get an abortion. Let's let's just try to get rid of this child. I'm trying to start a career. You know, I'm trying to go into the sheriff's. I'm, I'm not really trying to I'm not really trying to ruin my career over a child. I'm not. I can barely take care of myself. Why would I want to take care of you and a child? I, I don't want to do that right now. I understand what I'm doing. And you're you're putting holes on my plan. 
But now I got a, a I got a friend girl, and we're talking one night, and this girl will not stop calling, will not stop texting me, pops up over at the house. I, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. I have never seen a I never seen any papers that say she was pregnant. My friends tell me uh, if, if she's pregnant, it's, it's by some other guy, man. Watch your mouth, we're on the air, son. She she messes around a lot. You know what I'm saying? So I try to distance myself from the females. It doesn't matter what. She still tries to find me or, or I don't know the words to use. She it's like it's like she's kit and I'm night rider or something. She just pops up on me like like well, well, where did you come from? You know, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. Like well, then get an abortion. I'll, get, I'll, I'll pay for it. I don't even want you to go half with me. Get an abortion. Or I'm, I'm over the time limit to, to to get an abortion. You can't have an abortion how pregnant I am. How pregnant are you? I never get an answer. Unbelievable. I don't know what to do. Well, um, <laughs> now now she says what? She, she never tells you how pregnant she is. When's the last time you had sex with her? Last time I had sex with her was like three, three, four months ago. Well, it's not too late to have an abortion if that's the last time you had sex with her. It's not too late. Okay. Um, now, how is your current girl reacting to this? She's, I mean, she's on the verge of just like, I, I, she don't want to deal with me no more because this girl's just steady calling my phone. I, I mean, I'm trying to be faithful. You know, I'm not really... I'm not really, you know, saying to get out there and go get a type guy, but you know, I'll do what I have to do when it, when time comes. But she's like, why is this girl study texting you? Why is she study calling you? I mean, what what do you guys got going on? I'm study saying nothing. Well, you always have the option of going to the ex and saying, you know what, I'm really concerned for you and the baby, so let's go to the gynecologist together and make sure you're getting the proper prenatal care. Okay. And see if she tries to avoid you. Yeah. If she avoids me, I know then that you're lying. Well, because you'd be offering to help out. Yeah. To let her believe that maybe you'd be coming back for that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then, uh, you know, if, if she agrees to go, go with her. Go to the gynecologist. Act like a couple. Ask yeah. the gynecologist to see the ultrasound and things like that. Play the part. Play the part. And then the minute you find out she's lying, you kick her ass to the curb. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom, can you do me a favor, man? What's that, John? Could you take me out Kobe Bryant style, man? Of course I can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Ted on the Tom Likes Show. Hello, Tom. What's going on, buddy? Not much, Ted. Hey, listen. Ever since my FM radio broke, and I've been forced to listen to AM, man, I don't want to go back to FM after listening to your show. But uh, let's get to the subject. Uh, about a month ago, I spoke to you about the girlfriend I had, and uh, she wouldn't let me like see my friends five ten minutes after work. Yeah, that's okay if you're, you know, getting out, getting drunk or whatever. But I guess my question is, uh, you know, how do you handle a woman that is controlling? And uh, if you're not out trying to be away from the woman, you still love her. And I, I'm just kind of confused. Uh, that night when you spoke to me, you told me to leave her, right? Yeah. Well, I, I made the decision not to leave her, but to, you know, help her out and stay with her and all this stuff. But uh, she ended up shooting a gun that night. Not at me, not around me, but she shot a gun. That's scary. No. I guess my question, most of all to you, I know you're not a psychologist, whatever, but you know, if you love the woman enough to help her out and stay with her two kids, but yet you still have this feeling that you want to go, is there a I way would, to? I wouldn't touch have that. that. Kick my ass out of I I wouldn't sorry. touch a person like that with a ten foot pole. I wouldn't be anywhere near anybody who's firing guns in the air. I am out. The Tom Likes Show.